greet you all and present today our talented guest and we're talking about Meha Pestongi. Meha is a freelance journalist since the mid 70s. She has a wide spectrum of interests. She has been a theater critic, art writer, book review columnist, and written extensively on street children, housing writings, and anti-communalism issues. In 1999, Harper Calling Ninja published her first collection of short stories titled Mixed Marriage and Other Parsi Stories. This was followed in 2003 by Purvis, a novel set against the backdrop of the demolition of the Babri Masjid, resulting in communal riots all over India. Her second novel, Sadak Shah, published by Penguin India in 2005, traces life on the streets for a homeless child. Her play Piano for Sale, featuring two women, opened, opened at the National Centre for the Performing Arts in 2005. Her second play, Feeding Crows, won the South India segment of the BBC British Council Radio Playwriting Competition in 2008. Since then, she has scripted two plays titled 1997 and Turning Point. Piano for Sale was translated and performed in Meredith in 2018. And now she's here with us. What honor! <laughs> Dear Esther, what poetry means for you? First of all, Gelda, I would like to thank you for inviting me to your program. It is a great privilege to be able to speak to an audience of consisting of poets in a totally different con uh, continent, in a totally different culture. And it is so great that you have made this possible for someone from India to talk to someone in Brazil and South America. Thank you for that. For me, poetry is, some, is a very deep, um, an expression of a very deep emotions and ob observations also. A lot of my poetry is uh, rooted in nature, uh, but there is also political poetry, there is protest poetry. I have written quite a bit on the pandemic, which has been a very big trauma all around the world. And uh, I think poetry is a very special form of literature in the sense that uh, it puts everything in a very tight framework. Uh, I have written novels, I have written plays, and I've been a journalist. So each discipline has its own, uh, its own skills and its own demands. Uh, you know, if you're writing a novel, you have to slot at least a year for it. You have to keep time, you have to cut off from other commitments, and you have to be focused on it. Poetry is much more concise. You can write a poem in a few minutes, or even or, or of, of a couple of days. But I think what makes poetry special is that it has to be very tightly structured. A good poem has to be tightly structured. 
you cannot ramble on in a poem. A poem requires rhythm, it requires some kind of meter and uh, so there is a different discipline involved in writing poetry. So that's what makes it both challenging and interesting and it also gives you a lot of uh, space to play around with your ideas but I think for me at least, whatever I write, it has to go through several drafts. I'm never satisfied with a poem the first time I write it. I've never ever made it public with the first read, with the first draft. <coughs> it requires reworking, it requires disciplining. The poem may tend to ramble, you use a lot of words and you have to cut them out. So it, it requires a lot of chiseling, really, you know, like a sculptor chisels the stone until he gets to the final uh, piece that he wants. We work, chisel out words, we use words, then we discard them, we replace them. And that's the way the poem develops. I think poetry is the most beautiful way to make literature known around the world. I do think it's a very important part of literature. Poetry is an extremely important part of literature. But the other genres are, have their own strengths and certain things if it, certain topics you need to talk about have to be dealt with in different mediums. If you want to tell a long story, a novel is a better way to do it. If you want to tell something dramatic or if you want to make a contrasting viewpoints visible, then you do it through drama. There are, there are many ways of doing things. You have to select your medium and poetry is one of the mediums in literature. Which poets have inspired you? Uh, po which poets have inspired me? I would say Robert Frost, the American poet, has been a deep influence. He writes also largely on a lot of his poems are strongly influenced by nature, strongly based, rooted in nature. And that is also the way I, a lot of my poems, not all, but a lot of my poems are also rooted in nature. Uh, I have also been influenced by Pablo Neruda. I respond to, uh, you know, there is a certain electric current running through his work. Uh, which is very vibrant and um, especially his anti-war poems are extremely vibrant and I respond to them very strongly. Do you believe that poetry can adapt anything and read? And why? Uh, I think uh, most topics can be absorbed in poetry. What's your opinion about the contemporary writers and poets? Uh, a lot of poems, a lot of poets, you know, the, the, probably the most, the widely, the most widely written poetry is love poetry. A lot of it sorry to say, is not very deep. It won't last. It may be a very special moment for the poet when they are writing it. I respect that. And they are fully entitled to write it and cherish it because it is a memory that they will cherish later on in their lives. But it is not going to much of it unless it's a very specially written poem. It's not going to stand the challenge of time and history. 
that doesn't mean it's unimportant. It's important for the people at that time. But it does not, it's not going to last, it's not going to impact, have a historical impact. Do you prefer ancient or modern poetry? Uh, do I prefer ancient or modern poetry? Um, see, the two are completely different. Ancient poet poetry is all epic poetry. Whether you, you know, whether it's the Greek poetry of Iliad and um, it, it, uh, or the Homer poets, or whether it's Ramayana, Mahabharata in India, or whether it's Firdosi writing the Shahnama in Persian. These are all long poems. They are epics. They are classics. Uh, and they tell stories. They all, some of the, some of which may be historical, some of it may be mythical. They may be mythology. Mythology is woven into them. They are very different to what is happening today. Uh, nobody is writing that kind of poetry as far as I know. Today, uh, I think the, it has to reflect, poetry has to reflect the society we are in and our society is very different. We have to accept that, recognize it. And today's the poetry that's coming out is much more succinct. It's not written over, uh, you know, like not, not too many poems are written over years and generations. But that does, that's, it's got its own strengths in its tautness. It's got its own strength in what is being said and what is being reflected. And um, that's, so it's very different from classical poetry. It may, these are the po poems, some of the poems written today will be contemporary classics. But uh, they are, you cannot really compare them to the old ones. With the advent of several digital platforms offering ebooks for online reading, do you think that interest in a physical book has it? I think uh, the digital, what has happened, especially after the pandemic has set in, poetry has become universally, uh, universal. Poets have connected across continents, across the world, and they have found voices. They are hearing people across the world. Uh, I don't think before this I had, I knew anything about poetry in Brazil or in Romania or in Greece. I mean, contemporary poetry in any of these places or even or just a little bit maybe in UK or US, but certainly not in many other cultures. And this platform has made, uh, opened it up to everyone. And it has been a huge learning experience and it continues being that. Uh, and also new people are coming into the field. I'll give you an example. The Welsh poet Rebecca Lowe, she introduced us to a new genre of poetry. Um, I'm forgetting what it was called, but I think uh, Anyway, it's rooted in a Japanese form where you use one word in the first line, so two words in the second, three in the third, and four in the fourth, and five in the fifth, and then reverse the order in the next stanza. Now, uh, after that, I, I wrote about it, and after that, uh, someone who has never written poetry before uh, has started writing poetry about her life and her life is quite amazing because she is the mother of quadruplets, four children and 
two of her quadruplets are autistic and she has brought them up very well and her poetry she has never written poetry before so this is what the international connection is doing pushing people who have never written poetry into starting to write poetry and that's a great thing and i don't think uh, uh, this would have happened without internet it i mean obviously it would never have happened without internet uh, e books and where is the online section is it going to do away with books or is it going to supersede books i would like to not think so because for me books are very special there is something about holding your book in your hand or holding any book in your hand the touch the tactile the feel of paper the feel of the the fragrance that comes out with a new book all that is uh, something that can never be replicated online and uh, that has a charm of its own i don't think and i think people will still want that whatever they do online they will still want that i have not published a poetry book i have published novels but i have not published a poetry book and that is also because there is a certain there's a certain pleasure in writing why does one write poetry one does not write poetry to make money because poetry does not pay whether you do it online or whether you do it offline in fact many poets are self published so they are spending their own money to get their work in print so there is they're doing it because of pleasure there are very few things in this world done today just for pleasure and po writing poetry is one of them why have i not published poetry books so far because the whole pleasure of writing gets killed when you have to deal with publishers in i mean i have sent books to publishers and not even acknowledged not even neither an accept or forget accept not even a reject they don't even have the courtesy to send a reject slip so i've stopped sending them yes i have considered the route of self publication but there is having been a journalist i know that self published books are seen as vanity press and are not taken too seriously by reviewers so i have hesitated i don't know whether if that will change but uh, certainly approaching publishers and dealing with them is uh, has been very painful so i just stop sending stuff out what's your advice to the facebook poets i don't have any advice to new uh, to facebook poets or any new poets except keep writing if you enjoy it just keep writing that is the, the biggest thing facebook has done is it's given you a platform facebook has given us a platform we we write we there will there will be people who will like what we write there will be people who will critique what we write but you have to be open to taking criticism and you have to uh, and that's fair enough because you will also like something written by others and you will not like it uh, you will not like something written by them and they have to take it i think facebook has been more satisfying than uh, uh, approaching certainly more satisfying than approaching uh, publishers because you get a response from people you don't know so you think it, it's an honest response they don't have to be polite to you or they don't have to say nice things if they don't feel that way they can ignore it or they can say nice things or they may not say nice things they may just ignore it that's also fair enough but there will be some people even if it's 5 or 
there will be some people who will respond positively, negatively, but they will respond, which is much better than sending your book to a manuscript to a publisher and having it disappear in the dark, deep, dark hole of nowhere. So Facebook has served and certainly served a purpose. Do you think the networks are helping new writers? And uh, of course, the, as I already said, new, the new writers are being helped, uh, are getting confidence that they can, they can publish, they can put their work up. There are lots of poetry societies aside from Facebook. Once you go on Facebook, you realize there are lots of poetry societies who are happy to, some will publish whatever you send them. Some will say the poetry has to be gone through a admin and that means that there is some editorial, uh, you know, standard being maintained. So all that is good. And I think that's great. Rather, uh, you know, it's going through that. And now, finalizing this moment, kindly, can you recite one of your poems for all of us now, please? So, uh, now you want me to recite a poem? I have a poem with me. It's a bit of a naughty poem, but it's written in, uh, with the imagery of nature. It's called Cactus. And there was a period I used to go walking in a particular garden every morning. And in that garden, there was one section of that garden that was a cactus, a clump of cacti, cacti over there. And I wrote many poems in that garden. This is the poem from the cactus clump. Cactus. Erect, erect, cacti stand erect, piercing the sky with prickly spikes, emerging from grass, soothing and cool, rough softness compensating for pokes. Opening black-tipped fingers to the sky, porcupine cacti, Invite sunlight to penetrate deep. How do porcupines make love when tiny touches erupt erect quills that prick and sting the other? Fierce cacti soldiers threaten to poke at the touch, but dare you lift a finger the bristles are only a brush. Between prickles, cacti skin is soft to touch. Pierced by pointed cacti spikes, sky protects blue with a hymen of grey. Cacti provide no bird perch among prickly bristles. So sparrows soar, searching for softer space to dust. Thank you. Oh, wow. It was a great pleasure to meet you today, dearest. Hope you have enjoyed it too. And you guys, you know, we have a date in the next Sunday, okay? Stay well, stay safe, blessings to all you.